All right, guys, so today I've, I'm going to show you some tips that I have for inletting on parallel tanks. Um, I'm inletting this little sharps, and I thought I'd make this video to kind of show you some of the things that most people have problems with when they're inletting something like this. So what I mean by parallel tanks is that it's, this tang here is not tapered, so it is the same at the top as it is at the bottom. Um, that's super important because if it's tapered, you're going to look at your inletting black completely different. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can see my inletting black in here. I have it set about halfway back. Um, so at this point, that I'm working from a blank. I used an end mill to get it to this point, or a little bit before this point. Um, and now I am on to using my scraper. Um, this... This part gets, especially with parallel tangs, it's very common for people to get gaps while they're inletting. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, um, well, if you're putting it on too thick, you're gonna have problems there because that's gonna give you false readings. When you're trying to get a fit that is less than a couple thousandths of an inch, then you're going, you need to have a very light coating of inletting black. Like what you see here, that might even be a little too much. But the, the amount that I put on my uh, acid brush here from the start, that's going to get me through this most of this inletting job. Um, so as you slide this back, you can see it's I'm stopping three quarters of the way back right now. <clears throat> it slid in pretty well all the way up to that point. We measured this. We know they're parallel. So what, what that tells us is this is where our spots are high. If you tr look at it traditionally as if, as in like regular inletting black, you're gonna start scraping away at the black back here and that's how you end up with gaps. So instead you're gonna wanna kinda come up to this end here and scrape. And keep doing that until you go all the way back on it. So one of the other things that gets people false readings and everything is if you try to pound this in here with a big hammer and you're hitting it in um it'll actually flex that wood a little bit and it'll make you look like you have gaps back here and you'll be like it was close for a minute ago now it's not that's that wood flexing and it's actually possible to pop those ears off on the wood um, if you try to go too hard with it so just be just be aware of that um, i didn't put any inlining black on that time so Okay, so I'm checking for gaps. Another good way to check for gaps is using a feeler gauge. Um, I use a one and a half thousandth feeler gauge, and that'll give me, take care of any false readings. But doing that, you know, make sure you wipe off any excess inlining black off that metal, just so you can get a, see a clean line there. Um, if you don't have a sharp edge, it's really hard to get a good, to do a good inletting job. But let's see. So that kind of brought up another point there. You got to look at your grain and how your wood grain's moving. Um, you can see here, some of my grain is kind of coming across this wrist here. Uh, that might not be ideal for a heavier caliber rifle. This is going to be a little 3220, so it's not going to be anything crazy. But the way you use your scraper, just like any other tool, you want to go with that grain. So I'm going to exaggerate it and say that the grain is running across like this. It's coming this way. If I'm going to scrape down this way, I'm going to get all kinds of chatter, and that's where you get the really close lines on your inletting stuff, on your inletting black. You'll see that. Um, but if you go this way or this way, you're going with that grain, and it makes a much smoother cut or uh, scrape, I guess. One way to combat that chatter that you get is to angle that scraper. So instead of just continually going like this every couple ones or so kind of angle it a little bit more and that will stay on those high spots and kind of level everything out
and you want this, you don't want this to go in very hard. You want it to kind of slide in pretty easily. Like right now, if I was all the way set back, I would still be scraping because that is just hitting a little bit too hard on there. And that's when you risk splitting it, especially if it's going to go to a different hum humidity level or whatever. Like I'm out in Montana here, which is super dry. Um, that means that taking it out east, the wood might swell a little bit. Uh, that's good because it could cover up some of your inletting flaws. That's bad because it could end up splitting the wood if it's too tight of an inlet. But uh, I'll leave that at that for now, and I figured that'd be some good tips you guys might like. The main tools I'm using here, uh, first off, this carver's vise that I got is incredible. It just, the jaws move. I'll do a separate video on that here in the future. Um, but other than that, I'm using the Jerry Fisher scraper here, which is uh, available at Brownells. These are great tools. It's advertised as an octagon barrel tool, but uh, I can honestly say that I don't use it on octagon barrels at all. I use it mainly for doing receiver tangs and the faces of receivers and all that. So uh, this is definitely the most used tool for me in letting this in my uh, one chisel. But I'll put a link in the description for these, but I hope this video helps you out.